Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, yes, I'm going to bend to pressure. <laughs> I've had a lot of requests for me to go and review Oracle Linux. So I'm going to go do that right after this. Okay, so let me... Uh, Let me get myself on the screen here. So what we're going to do, of course, is take a look at Oracle Linux today and examine some of the options and some of the features that you can install with this. So the first place you'll, I mean, obviously you can go to the download here page, but you know this is a rail compatible alternative to CentOS. And this wasn't here originally, so they've added this recently. And as I recall, originally, Oracle drew their libraries from CentOS initially. And I believe they have now closed that up and it, it is all self-contained. So Oracle provides all of the libraries uh, that you may want or need. They, they also offer you know, a number of different options that you can use for support. There's basic support uh, that's offered and premier support that's offered as well. There's also this lifetime sustaining support, which I'm, I guess is allowing support for older releases that are that have gone EOL. So they will provide support indefinitely, provided of course that you pay for that. But uh, and they don't provide any prices for it. But let's, if you want 24/7 support with just Telephone and online support, access to enhancements, and updates and errata, which is kind of interesting. I wonder if this means that if I don't have basic Linux support, do I have access to the updates? So we'll find that out. Uh, but the enterprise manager for Linux, manager, this could be just if you're an enterprise. They are pretty careful to say up here, though, that it's 100% binary compatible is free to download, use, and share. There's no license cost, no need for contract, and no usage audits. But for business critical infrastructure, consider the support. So I think this is applying to only for if you're a corporate customer and you have business critical functions. And correct me if I'm wrong. So the support contracts looks like you can do one or three years. Three years is 3,500 and one year would be $1,200 a year for that. So that's basic support. Now Premier gains you zero downtime patching with K-Splice. That's Red Hat's version of running the updating the kernel without downtime. So yeah, it's similar to Ubuntu's uh, uh, system that they have that does similar types of things. So you have KVM and cloud native environment, cluster storage for, or for Oracle Linux and Premier backports. And for Premier, $6,897 for three years. And then a single year, probably, yeah, $2,300 for a single year if you want that. And of course, they don't tell you uh, what the extended is. You, you would probably have to contact their sales support in order to find out what that would be. And that, I imagine, <clears throat> depends on how far back in the uh, Linux stack you are trying to support. So let's uh, let's go to the download page and see what we got. So there's ISO images here. There are Vagrant uh, images there. There's cluster images, uh, and there's those are on the Docker Hub. And there's uh, also templates for VMs via OVA, so that would be a number of formats, uh, XCP and also, of course, VMware. However, um, Proxmox, you can do OVA, but you got to take it apart and, and install the, uh, the <laughs> images, the disk images manually. So, yeah. And then there's a Raspberry Pi, so you can run Oracle Linux on your Raspberry Pi. Four. Looks like they also support three as well. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that one today, so let's just go get the ISO image. And in here, there's a few choices. Always choices. So if you're reading up here, let me uh, this is kind of fine print, isn't it? Let me uh, let me bring that up a little bit so you can see it. 
uh, so the full ISO contains everything uh, that you want to install Oracle Linux. There's also UEK boot ISO, and that is the unbreakable enterprise kernel. And that is an Oracle uh, kernel. So that that takes Red Hat's kernel, and then they apply their magic to it to make it un un unbreakable, whatever that means. But um, you can get the Red Hat compatible kernel if you choose by downloading the boot ISO. So, and then there's source code for all the packages that are in the full ISO, which is right here. So I, I'm, this is 8.3 and that's the one I would, I downloaded this one, the full ISO. Uh, and that will have, <clears throat> I believe as default, the unbreakable enterprise kernel. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let me, let's just get over here and I've already installed it once because I wanted to run through it and make sure that it ran under Proxmox, and it does. So, um, well, actually, I don't need to start that, so let me just shut that back down. What I need to do is to create a VM. There we go. And I'll put this out on my NAS and we'll attach it to the binary. And that all looks good. And then I'll put my spice. I am gonna put this on UIFI and we'll put it on the SAN. And we'll do QT35. We'll want to do this to the same one. I don't think there's anything else there I want. I do want to bump that up and that up. And also memory. So I've given it four, two cores and two threads. Well, two cores and two CPUs, and which gives me a total of four. And then also 4096 is the amount of memory I'm going to give this. I did not look to see what they actually recommend. But I it probably depends. You can run... Of course, you can run either Red Hat or Oracle as with a GUI, if you wish. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a server. I, I've, we've been over that before. I don't think I need to mention it again. That that will, I mean, if you're on Wayland, you're probably okay. But if you're on X11 or X10, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Okay, so that's all set. Let's go ahead and bring up the console. And of course, this is the spice. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger let me get this all the way up so that we have a fairly good window you can test the the uh, media i've already done that also they uh, they also have a signature for the iso file so if you want to compare what you downloaded to what they had originally put out there if you're afraid of malware you can do that as well and i always recommend that you should always check the signature and make sure that it is valid and this should bring up Anaconda. <clears throat> this will take a little bit. Their, their version of Anaconda, I'm going to have to do this again. Their version of Anaconda does have a lot more in install features in it. So I'll check my keyboards, English, English US. My time and date is wrong, so we'll fix that. And that should be straightened out. Installation, local media. And then you have some options here for what type of server is it is that you want to run or even if you want to run a uh, their equivalent to a Red Hat workstation. And then there's a number of other additional things that you can install here if you wish. <clears throat> um, this creates... Uh, an LVM partition that installs an XFS file system on top of it. Now, <clears throat> when we get into the security features, we'll talk about some of the other things. You can enable or disable KDump. I am going to enable the network. And we'll look at the security policies that are available. So <clears throat> this is kind of nice. They have criminal justice information services. So they obviously, that would be FBI, of course. Uh, but they obviously have a number of certifications already for Oracle Linux. So apparently the government may be using this already, but they're like the NIST 800, 
There's also Australian Cyber Security Center. There's HIPAA. Uh, the protection profile, this would be for general purpose uh, uh, government usually uh, it profiles and that and it'd have to adhere to the CNSSI. And uh, there are ramifications for those. <clears throat> those are typically uh, governmental offices that don't operate in a classified environment. PCI DSS, of course, is for credit card. Uh, there's a standard uh, security profile for Oracle Linux. Now, if I select this and select that profile, it's going to give me an error because they require a, 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 a slash log and audit on separate partitions from the main. I think they also probably will flag me later for not having home and on its own partition and also temp. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And then I'll set up a root password with a semi-secure password, even though I don't, I don't usually like to put root with a password and I'll probably disable root later. If I were to put this into production, it definitely would be disabled. The password would definitely be disabled. Okay. And then we're ready to begin the installation. This will take a little bit. And so I will pause. I think it takes about five minutes or so, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, the current time is 1832. So I'll be back when this is finished. Hopefully, if I can find my cursor. Okay, so it's finished and <clears throat> looks like it took about six minutes uh, to complete. So uh, we'll go ahead and reboot it. This is probably subject to found. Okay, so probably ought to look at that uh, EULA agreement. Uh, and of course, I can't do much with it because it's inside of the, the council. But we'll, we'll find the EULA. And yep, it's given me the system boot this time, not the ISO boot. Okay, and let's just make sure that I can sudo, and I can. So uh, the first thing I am going to do is an update, of course. <clears throat> and I will be back because I know there's at least 100 packages it's got to install. So 51 packages, but it translates to 51 or 102 items or 106 items that has to be installed. So, yeah, there it goes. I'll be back. Okay, that's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot. And I'll take you with me. Just so you get some idea of the first boot is always going to take a little bit longer because it has to set up the, I assume it would have to set up if it was using any additional temporary files, it would have to set all that stuff up. So, it's taking a while to come back down, I'll tell you that. Watchdog doesn't apparently want to leave memory. I'll be back. <laughs> no sense of keeping you sitting here with me. Okay, it's, I, you know, I, I can understand the, the long hang time for services to come down. This is a, you know, this is meant to work in a corporate environment where you have multiple users on it. So uh, you don't want to just slam, <laughs> wait 30 seconds and then blast one of the services out of memory. That's, that's probably not the best idea. You'd probably like to have them try to terminate on their own first. And if they don't, then you would wait some a reasonable amount of time so the users can save their work, get off before you uh, before you blast the services out. But 
Anyway, that's okay. The first thing I want to do before we get too far here is take a look at how much memory we're using. 207 megabytes is in use. And we do have some packages running that aren't normally up. And I noticed this earlier. I think Audit is installed and running. So <clears throat> that would account for some of the extra things that are going on here. So the other thing, let's see, I probably have to be sudo for that. So yeah, SE Linux is definitely enabled and it's the policy is targeted, it is enforcing. And so that is definitely running as well. I, I th let's see what other services might be up here. Well, I don't want to do it that way. We'll do it this way. I see cups running. Let's see if SSH is running. Yep, SSH is up. So, yeah, so it has a number of things that are running, which would explain the differences between some of the other uh, server-based systems that I've looked at recently. And so you, you might wonder, oh, 40 megabyte more. But yeah, there's more stuff running. So if you brought up those services on those other systems, you'd probably be pretty close at that. Uh, let's take a look at the kernel. It is 5417, and that is definitely the UEK or the Unbreakable Enterprise kernel. Now, <clears throat> that is maintained by Oracle. So the other thing I wanted to know about before we get too far Let's see what repos are currently enabled. So all of those belong to Oracle. And of course they maintain that kernel. That is not a Red Hat kernel, that is an Oracle kernel. So let's see, let's do, um, let's see what all of them are. Even in the ones that are disabled as well. So we have quite a few. I don't see the EPEL repo. Unless I'm blind, I don't see it, but we can look for that another way. I'm going to guess this is also an Oracle EPEL. Yep, it is. So we'll go ahead and install that. Okay, uh, and then I'll go ahead. <clears throat> before I do that, though, before I get too carried away, uh, the amount of disk it's taking is 2.6 gig. Not a lot, uh, you know, not a lot at all. It's pretty small. But then I haven't put very much on this yet either. So the other thing to find out the other, before we get too far is, is uh, I have heard... Red Hat has replaced Docker, and we know that. And let's see if Oracle has followed suit. Yep, we have replaced it with Podman. And I, I'll bet, yep, it's out here. And I'll bet Builda is too. Okay, so uh, if you wanted a pure Docker, you would of course have to install that yourself. But you know, the, the direction that Red Hat is taking and Oracle is following along with it is to uh, move to uh, Builda and Podman for their container management system. It is a fully OCI compliant and and I believe Kubernetes has already certified it. I, and Docker, I don't think will be certified next time around is what I've heard, but maybe it's just that it isn't preferred, but uh, I'm not sure what's happened there, but you know you can read the forums to find out what's going on with that. The other thing I want to know about is uh, I know that I know that I know Gluster will be here because it is a Red Hat product, but what versions do we have? So looks like it's 6.0. That's certainly better than some of the others. I could run that uh, as as it is. That would run. For, that would work for me. But you know, I think the main thing that I want to do right now is let me get my stuff out here. So I'm going to put out git and neofetch and htop and let's see one other thing that I need glances. Since I have the EPL, it's going to have to refresh those, and it's going to put a ton of stuff out. I'm 
not too bad. Let's see what HTOP says after we just added a whole bunch. Of, well, 232 meg. And probably can see audit now. It is running Network Manager. So we've got that. Yeah, Audit D is definitely running. That's good. That's a good thing. Not too much else, though. So, so for Network Manager, let me clear this. I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to exit out of this and close this down. Well, wait a minute. Before I do that, I probably should change the IP address, huh? So I guess I should do this first. Now you can now network manager. Typically lives in here, but one of the things about network manager is it doesn't write its default configuration out uh, until you make a change to it. So there's two ways you can modify it. You can go in and do the NMCLI network manager uh, uh, command line you, uh, you interface which is the hard way of doing things because it really does involve quite a few commands in order to change things or you can run this is what I do I don't know maybe this isn't right but it works for me thought that took a little while there we go so I I can then edit a connection it's a nice uh, curses based and I should say end curses but uh, yeah, it's a it's a nice curses based thing. Although I never heard anybody describe curses as being nice. But uh, okay, so I want a manual, and I want to show it. I'm gonna add an address, and this is a, a full uh, uh, cedral, and uh, we'll put it down here. And I'll get my gateway in, and I'll add my. Oops, I guess my one key is still sticking a bit. But we can go fix that. Okay. Oop. Typo. All right, so we're all good there. And I can go back. No, I don't want to delete it. <clears throat> I'll just make sure I didn't miss another one somewhere. <laughs> so I'll leave the console up before we use the uh, going. I'm going to use uh, SSH, so I have I have uh, some options to copy and paste if I want to. Yeah, we're waiting on this again. So I'm going to pause this until Watchdog decides to give up the ghost. Okay, so let me bring this back up. Yeah, it's okay. No codec, so I doubt that I will need any, but who knows. All right, let me make sure that my IP looks good. Routes look good. And let's make sure it's working. Yep. Okay, so I'll go ahead and sign off. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And then I will bring up. Oops. Such a creature of habit we are. All right. So the and it, it figured out that I was home. I wonder if it actually put the host entry in. I doubt it. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't know. So I'm not going to worry about that so much, but let's do... Um, We did HTOP already. Let's do NeoFetch. I'm 
Okay. And then um, okay, and then we'll look at glances. I always have to disable on some of these the IP because otherwise it exposes my public IP address, which I don't really want to do, and I'm not running under a VPN at the moment. Um, let's see, 465 meg with the app cache. And uh, yeah, not bad. So not much pressure on the system, but then it isn't doing a whole lot either. So uh, I guess the other thing to find out is what does Oracle do with ZFS? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we got that answer. Um, Let's capitalize it just to make sure. Nope. So I, I guess we have our answer about that. They don't. They do not include it. So, um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, we need to do. We need to do a Linus, don't we? I'm going to guess this it's probably not going to be great because most most servers don't harden and this isn't a hardened kernel so it's an unbreakable one I still don't know what that means give me enough time I can break it <laughs> I'm sure of that I'm sure I could cause a panic somewhere along the way Yeah, quite a few red things going by. Uh, so 62 is the overall. And let's see. I need a malware scanner. SS control profiles need to be tweaked. Enable sysdeck. Banner. Harden the SSH parameters. Yeah. And then always these. Disable firewire and USB. Always a good idea. And... Wants full, it wants home and temp and bar on a separate partition. Pam, typical, nothing really, and then also the issues. I think the issue, I think I saw issues. You may ask in issues. Reboot of the system is likely. Now, I just did that, so I wonder what, I've seen this before on, on RHEL based systems. I just don't remember what I did to fix it. I'll have to eventually, that one's easy. That's just build a firewall. So, um, Yeah. Uh, oh, um, let's see how how let's see what it did with the file system. Yeah. Okay. So it created uh, out of the single drive. <clears throat> this is curious. It, I guess it just did it on. So one of the partitions would be the boot. The other partition would be probably swap, and then the third partition would be the virtual group. My guess, and that's what's going on. So. Let's do a LV scan. Oops, yeah, I made the same mistake again, didn't I? So yeah, swap and root are on. Well, they're on their own actually. Okay, so after all of that messing around, I managed to take the file system up uh, to the 2.6 gig. So it's still got quite a bit of space left on it. And uh, I don't think there'll be any problem filling that up. So let, let me uh, let me go back up. I I think I think I am done looking at this. I mean, I could install. It has it has of course Copilot and, and all the other things that Red Hat normally has, and also CentOS. Uh, the only thing I, I guess. Yeah. So what do I think of Oracle Linux? Um, the the thing that's always bothered me about Oracle Linux is that they have their own kernel. They maintain their own repos now, and they could very easily, I mean, 
if you're going from one large comp- company to another, what makes you think that this isn't going to happen again? I guess is my big concern is that they control the kernel, they control the repos, and uh, they could easily they could easily convert this over to start charging support just like Red Hat did. So um, and make it a requirement. And it looks like it's fairly pricey. Not quite as pricey as Red Hat, though. Red Hat is a lot more money than that per per year for the enterprise Linux version. So um, that's my only worry about Oracle. Um, I mean, as far as an, an 8.3, start as a base system, yeah, it's probably got everything there, but I won't know until I actually do the analysis on it. All I'm doing right now is I'm adding it to the list to put it inside the analysis. And that will be probably not the next video or the next one because I'm really kind of tired of doing this. I'd like to go do something else for a while and then maybe come back to this, study it out, maybe give time to Rocky and see what they're doing. Uh, Maybe let a quarter slip by, maybe after the first quarter, then look at this uh, more in earnest. But uh, that's probably what I will do. So... That's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please like and subscribe and hope to see you again on the next video. Bye for now.